Welcome. Uh, we got a short example of motional EMF. Um, if you need a moment, uh, you can pause the video and copy down the diagram and the questions. Um, and the questions are, uh, which end of the rod is at a higher potential, aka voltage? Uh, and what is the, the EMF generated? What is that voltage? Um, in terms of the givens, and I'm giving you three things, uh, the angular velocity omega, the length of the rod L, and the magnetic field B. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead. All right, here we go. Um, okay, so um, there's actually a couple approaches to figuring out um, the magnitude of the, of the EMF for the voltage generated. But first, let's focus on which end of the bar is at a higher potential, okay? So let's say I was a little positive charge right there, okay? And at this moment, I am traveling roughly that way with the velocity. Okay, which way would I be forced? Okay, so if I, in order to do that, I'm going to use my right hand force rule, my Lorentz force rule. And if you point, you take your hand and point your fingers in the direction of the velocity, and then you curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, which is into the page, and stick your thumb out, your thumb will point toward the center of the circle. So what will end up happening is this end of the bar will have a bunch of positive charge stuck to it. And then that, that'll have that'll leave a bunch of negative charge back here. Now, again, what really happens is the electrons get moved and the protons stay still, but we're pretend it's positive charge here. Um, so in this case, the 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 bar the where it's attached and where it's spinning, that's your higher voltage. And then the outside of the bar is your lower voltage. Okay. And if you were to hook up a circuit to this, if you were to hook up some kind of wire, you know, from here to here, okay, positive charge would flow around the wire that way from the plus to the minus and positive charge flows from high voltage to low voltage. So that's which end of the bar is at a higher voltage, the, the part that's pivoted in this case. Now, uh, what's the magnitude of the EMF, okay? Well, um, we'd like to use our equation E equals BLV, okay? The difficulty is the, velo the linear velocity of different parts of the bar are different. So like the linear velocity near the center of the bar is very small, and the linear velocity at the tip of the bar is a lot. So uh, we're going to have to do something different than just using BLV for this. So uh, there's two approaches. The first one is to use this equation, but use an integral version of it. So it, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one tiny little chunk of the bar that has a velocity v. And we're going to assume the chunk is so skinny that the velocity everywhere is the same. And then we're going to uh, add up all those voltages. So the way I would write this is uh, DE, the voltage of that one little chunk, is equal to B times uh, DR, or I'll call it DR. And then the velocity. Well, how do you write velocity in terms of omega? Okay. Well, omega or velocity is omega r. Okay, that's a review from first semester. So uh, now you have an expression that we can integrate, and we're going to integrate both sides. This one will be 0 to e, and this one will be uh, the bar starts at 0, and what's the final radius? Well, that's the length of the bar l. Okay, so what we're integrating here is on the left side we got e. On the right side, b and omega are constants, so I'm going to pull those out. And you're integrating r dr, which is um, r squared over 2. And you have to evaluate that from 0 to l. And you get a, a fairly simple expression. You get b omega l squared over 2. Okay, So that is the magnitude of the EMF. So that's approach 1. That's the, the calculus approach. Okay, There's also an algebraic approach. So we know that EMF is equal to, and I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the negative because I'm just looking at the magnitude on both of these actually. This is the same thing over here. So the magnitude of the EMF is the uh, change in magnetic flux over uh, dt, the the derivative of the magnetic flux, the change in it versus time, uh, which is d times b a over dt. So it's the der time derivative of b a. Well. What's changing, the B or the A? Well, the B is definitely not changing. It's constant in the picture. But you can think of the area as changing. So I'm going to rewrite this. So the, 
The EMF is the magnetic field. Okay, oops, sorry about that. So the, the magnetic field times dA dt. Okay, so the area is changing. And basically, uh, we're going to do delta A over delta T. So B is, or B times, sorry about that, delta A over delta T. Okay. And what's what basically happens is the bar sweeps out a circle. Okay. So the dA, or the delta A, is uh, pi R squared, which in this case is pi L squared. Okay. What's the time? Okay. Well, you've got omega. And if you'll recall from when we did simple harmonic motion, T is 2 pi over omega. That's the time it takes to do one lap. So I have my delta A, it's pi L squared, and I have my delta time, it's 2 pi over omega. I'm going to put those in. So the magnitude of the EMF is B times pi L squared, okay, over 2 pi divided by omega, okay. And then you can do a little simplification here. The pi's drop out, uh, the omega goes to the numerator, and you get the same equation we just got a moment ago. And obviously, you should get the same answer. So um, that's two different approaches to find the, the EMF generated by this rotating bar in the magnetic field. Uh, on to the next topic.